Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SICW All-Star Wrestling. I'm Drew Abenhouse with the boss, Lucky P. Larson Esquire. We've got a great episode for you today. We have our tag team tournament continuing as Bobby D and the Big Texan take on your team of Kowalski and Mahler McDarby, the Dogtown Underground who will, who will advance to the finals. We shall see today. Curtis Wilde will be in action. Sean Vincent and the intern are here. Flash Flanagan will be making an appearance on today's episode. We also have a classic wrestling at the chase match featuring Hacksaw, Butch Reed. The natural. Yes, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight to it. Let's go up to the ring for our first match. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup set for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied to the ring by Stephen E. From Dubai at 341 pounds, Sheik Prater. His opponent from Boone County, weighing 222 pounds, Gary Roosevelt Graham. This guy has got a screw loose. Well, that might be what you need to succeed here in SICW. But at least I'll say this. <laughs> if he forgets what he does for a living, he can look on his tights. Referee Nick Reidenauer called for the bell. Look at that. He's, everything about this guy is unorthodox. Uh, that is one way of phrasing it, unorthodox. Yes, yes. sir. You might also call it nuts, crazy, well, weird, those can strange, all, Those can all be positive attributes. Odd. Unusual. Here is two newer faces, of course, Gary Roosevelt Graham has had about three, four matches here in SICW. And Sheik Prater just returning from a several year absence. Both of these men looking to make their mark in SICW. And at this time, a win is critical for, for both of them. Well, one guy was a former oh. one guy was a former president of the country, right? Nope. Look at that, Gary hitting a big clothesline, but it didn't budge yeah, the big man, I don't, Prater. I don't think Prater that's said, work. do it again. And that's three from Gary Graham. Oh, and well, that worked. one from Prater just flattening Gary Graham to the mat. My May, God. You know what? Maybe, maybe he'll knock some sense into this guy. Oh, time will tell. Jake Prater, of course, has been a master of those chops. You know, the, these fans are chanting you sold out as if they wouldn't also sell their services to the highest bidder. I mean, this I man on the got outside a bit more, offered him a lot of money. No, they got more he's, character than that. He's looking out for his family. I mean, he's he's Jake, paying his taxes to Uncle Sam off the, the pay. Jake, so, you know, he's helping the country. Prater, Sheik Prater, just being very vicious. Oh, my God, neck breaker. I think that hurt. Graham. Yeah, it hurt me. Good, do it again, do it again. Hey, come on. You wouldn't want to see me hurt. I wouldn't? No, why would you? Uh, gee, let me count the ways. Aren't we friends? Oh, so all right. You. Will you bring me food? I'll be your friend if you bring me food. If you order from the dollar menu. All right, deal. Well, we, I'm a cheap date. We can make that work. All right. <laughs> all right, Gary Graham, he's got his work cut out for him. He's got 120 this pounds. This is not going to uh, work. Oh, well, he looks like a strong man in and of himself. That did not get the job See, done. See, as soon as I said this is not going to work, a, it didn't work. A very ambitious attempt from Gary Graham, a freighter. Oh, Just brother. too much. Now these oh, he's fans going for the eyes. Now the fans starting to woof like dogs, too. What's this guy? I think he's the junkyard dog, the moon dog, the yellow dog. I bet the moon dogs have a lot of children in the south. You know, I've actually managed the moon dog several times. Did you know that? There you go. Yep. Jake uh, Prater staying all over Gary Graham. This is a new chic Prater. I've managed the moon dog against Jerry Lawler several times. Good. Don't you want to ask me who won? Oh, look at those chops from the Sheik. I guess not. Getting up ahead of Steve. Uh, Gary Graham getting out of the way. Well, that didn't work. Returning the chops to Jake Prater. Ringing the arm. Yeah, staying all over. Just wrenching that arm. He's got such long hair, too. I'd pull the hair. Well, you're a cheater. I'm a winner. Oh, they were going for, uh, I think, a, almost like a mini battle of strength there. I don't think I would want to get into a battle of strength with this guy. I certainly would not. No. You know, I'm See, look at this, Prater. This is the kind of stuff you would not see from him 
before. Yeah, and he didn't win before. Now he's winning. He's with the Attila two belts. You know, I mean, maybe Attila will give him one of the belts and they'll both be champion. Well, I doubt that, but you, I guess you never know about these things. I don't know what Stephen E. has planned for his faction. Hey, it's Devastation Incorporated. Absolutely correct, and they are devastating indeed. Apparently, from what my sources tell me, this man here actually has connections to the original Devastation Incorporated run by General Skandar Akbar. That's right. Yep. Of course Look I'm at right. the fans. They're chanting their support into Gary Graham. Oh, look at Prater just wrenching that neck. I've got it. His, he's, his he's two not, hands are almost big, bigger than Gary Graham's whole head. He's not Teddy Roosevelt. He's not FDR Roosevelt. He's Eleanor Roosevelt, right? No. No. Gary Roosevelt Graham is his name. Is he related to the Roosevelts? Here's Jake Prater. He's going to have to use his uh, power moves. He is not built for a marathon. Now, how do you know? Maybe he's got a lot of cardiovascular, uh, you know, yeah. built up. I think you can see him start to uh, lose that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out. He's starting to slow down. He's starting well, to. That works. Yeah. Both men struggling to get to their feet. Prater gets there first. Now, see, here's the problem. Oh, now look at this. The man, uh, Stephen E. Hey. He's using Gary Roosevelt Graham's own chain on Gary. Well, that's his own fault for oh, bringing it. Oh, big running body block. Referee calls for the three. That's his own fault. He shouldn't have brought it to the ring. It is the reinvented Sheik Prater. Victorious with a little help from Stephen E. Ladies and gentlemen, this devastation incorporated is dangerous. And as of right now, they are victorious. Of course they are. Sheik Prater, led by Stephen E. with the pinfall win on All-Star Wrestling. Maybe that guy won't bring that ridiculous chain to the ring with him next time. Ladies and gentlemen, let me head to ringside to get some words from Curtis Wilde. I think I'll stay here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the volatile one, Curtis Wilde and Wildfire. Curtis. August the 13th, you have one of the biggest challenges of your career as you will go one-on-one -on -one with Attila Khan. True story, Daddy, true story. The fact is, Attila Khan, you've been running roughshod over SICW a whole lot like I did. I am one of the most decorated superstars in SICW history. I had the SICW Classic Champion. I had the Bruiser Brody Memorial Cup. I had every championship of every organization that matters in the area, and then COVID happened. Shut everything down. But the wild side is back, baby. The wild side is back right here in SICW, and the fans have finally come around to get behind us. So it's not just the wild side. It is an army of wild siders coming on our back every time we step in this ring. And if you thought that I was a force to be reckoned with before, you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, Attila Khan is a threat unlike any you've really faced. It's not so much a wrestling match as just a crazy, wild brawl. Let's just call it like it is. It is going to be a fight. Attila Khan, Curtis Wilde, one on one for the first time ever. So SICW, you are about to step on through to the wild side like you never had before. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. It's August the third. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Stephen E. Curtis. I don't know, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to meet Stephen E. He is now the leader of Devastation Incorporated, of Sheik Prater and Attila Khan. Stephen E, how can oh, oh, look, it's Skandar Subpar. <laughs> you know, first of all, let me introduce myself to you. I am Stephen E, the international businessman here in SIWCW. Now let me, it's SICW, Junior. Like I was saying, 
You have no chance. So I'm going to make an offer to you. I'm going to make a business offer to you that will be beneficial for you and your family. What you need to do is you need to walk away from this match with the Tilakon. That's what needs to happen. And if you don't, then there's going to be hell to pay. And let me explain something. Wildfire. Wildfire. I see you here next to him. Why don't you come on to my side, come to Devastation Inc. and join a real man, join somebody who will take care of you like a queen. Stephen E. with the taste smacked right out of his mouth. Well, that that changed. To the wild side. Well, that certainly changed his tune really quick. Well done, Wildfire. Curtis, you're up next. You've got a match right now, Curtis. How about you get somebody in the ring and I make an example of what I'm going to do when me and Attila Khan are one-on-one. -on -one. Ladies and gentlemen, let's head to the ring. Curtis Wilde's up next. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup set for one fall. Introducing first, from parts unknown, at 220 pounds, he is the intruder. His opponent from the wild side. Oh, accompanied to the ring by Wildfire. It's volatile, Curtis Wild. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't waiting for anything. He said it. He was ready to make an example yeah, I, I, I of get, whoever to I'm, show what he's going to do to Attila Khan. I'm going to go on record here, and I'm going to say that I don't like the intruder's chances. We'll see. I don't like anybody's chances against a, a Curtis Wild that is this focused. See what Kowalski's brought out of this man? See, it's all thanks to me and Kowalski. We've brought this fire out. That's what we do. We make people better. Well, Attila Khan is one of the most dangerous men on the planet. And this version of Curtis Wilde, ah, oh, look at that clothesline. He looks like he's ready to take on a challenge, the caliber of Attila Khan. Well, keep in mind, this is not Attila Khan. This is not Attila that Khan. It might not be, but it's uh, certainly what Curtis Wilde is envisioning. He can envision it all he likes. Big spine buster from the volatile one. He can envision it all he likes. This man is not the international bounty hunter. This man is not Attila Two Belts. This is Intruder No Belts. Oh, look at this, Intruder. He was fighting off uh, for a minute. Oh, Curtis with that twisting finale. It's the WT. Uh, oh no, I was gonna say the WTF for the one, two, three. He pulls off the intruder. Yeah, you know, this could be a mistake. Look at Curtis, he's looking right into the camera. I he's, know he is. He's talking to Attila Khan. Of course he is. So he got nice cross face type maneuver he wants from Curtis Wilde. Yeah, he's inflicting pain. The intruder submits to yep. Curtis Wilde. Look at Curtis. Well, he is focused. Wildfire is focused. Yeah, and again. And look at Curtis signaling for the belt. He can signal all he likes. That's not Attila Khan in that ring. Your winner, volatile Curtis Wild. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to take a quick commercial break, but don't go anywhere. We will be right back with Sean Vincent and the intern in action. Don't go away. Wrestling fans on Saturday, August 13th at the Community Center in East Grondelet, Illinois. SICW brings you a former NWA champion along with a WWE legend. That's right, Tommy Rich, former NWA star, will conduct a wrestling seminar at noon that day for those wanting to brush up on their skills or those wanting to see if they have what it takes to be a professional wrestler. The cost for the seminar is $30 per person, which also includes admission to the huge event that night where WWE legend Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. will be in action. That's right, the ace Bob Orton Jr. teams with his student, the young Brandon Beretta, as they will take on the team of Kowalski and Mahler McDarby, 
led by Lucky P. Larson. Also that night, the SICW title will be on the line. The champion Attila Khan will defend the title for the first time against Curtis Wilde. You can bet the SICW fans will be on the wild side Saturday, August 13th. Lincoln Place Pawn in Fairview Heights will take care of all of your cash loan and pawn shop needs. They deal in gold, jewelry, guns, tools, and much, much more. Lincoln Place Pawn, located at 823 Lincoln Highway in Fairview Heights, Illinois. Call 618-632-2274. Lincoln Place Pawn is the place to visit. Are you looking for that good quality repair garage? Look no further than Pawpaw Towing and Auto Repair. Located at 3492 Mississippi Avenue in Cahokia Heights, Illinois. For all your automotive repairs and service needs, let Pawpaw Towing and Auto Repair be the one to help you. 24-hour service for all the needs. Call 618-401-5220. Pawpaw Towing is the one to call. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup is a tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first from the State Hospital, 303 pounds, the intern. His tag team partner from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. At 211 pounds, your Canadian hero, Sean Vincent. Their opponents first. From Harrisburg, Illinois, at 205 pounds, Jimmy Razor. His tag team partner from Auckland, New Zealand, at 201 pounds, Austin Mulitano. The astonishing Austin Mulitano. Uh -huh. I do like the accents in New Zealand. I'll give him that. Oh, no, that's... Sean Vincent. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see if I got this straight. These people are so stupid, they're chanting USA for somebody in the ring who's from New Zealand. I think it's against the Canadian. Unbelievable. I think so, too. The bell has rung. It is Austin Mulitano and Sean Vincent. I mean, these people Starting could not be off. any dumber. Look at this. This is only his second match here in SICW, and he's already got the crowd firmly behind him, does Austin Mulitano. Well, However, it's because they don't like this guy. Sean Vincent looked like a thumb to the eye, got yes. this one started off in his yeah. favor. It's because they're so consumed with xenophobia, they're chanting USA for somebody Whoa. who's not even American. Whoa, look at this. Nicely done from Austin. Who just pulled his hair. Did you see that? Nope. You don't see much, do you? You're wearing sunglasses. I think that's causing you a lot of problems in here. Austin with the tag to Jimmy Razor. Nicely done on Orthodox Tag Team. You know, obviously this Jimmy Razor hasn't seen many Razors in his day. Oh, how about that knee to the face? Sean out before the one count even, wow. Well, why are you surprised by that? The man is an international superstar. Yeah, he just got a knee to the face. And he still kicked out at one. He's that strong. He's that resilient. Look at this. Good tag double team work team. from double Jimmy team. Razor. A double teaming illegal. Austin Mulitano. Pulled the tights. Hip toss to the Canadian. Nice pinfall, strong pinfall. Hip Hooks the to outer the leg. Canadian. He has a name. It's your Canadian he's, hero, Sean Vincent. He's got Sean that Vincent. left arm tied up. The Canadian. Are you going to call this guy the New Zealander? Well, he is from New Zealand. So, that so is he a bushwhacker? No, that's not what you said. Well, they're from New Zealand, aren't they? Look at this. Let's see what these guys got in mind. This is a first-time team-up from Mulatano and Razor. Let's see how they coexist. What about sheep herders? Can they be the sheep herders? If they herd sheep. You know, I would like to see a match between the Sheep Herders and the Bushwhackers. That would be very interesting. My money would be on the Sheep Herders. Me too. <laughs> the Bushwhackers would try to lick their foreheads and the Sheep Herders would destroy them. Yep, that would be the end of that. Oh, look at that. Stunner to Razor. Just jacking the jaw. I think he needs to tag in his intern here. See, he heard me. Well, we'll see how it goes. We've seen in recent history... 
Sean Vincent a little disappointed in his intern, but no, he's, not he's still learning. That's the point of being an intern it's, it's is to not, learn. It's not disappointment. It's, you know, it's, it's tough love. Okay. Who do you think's got the size and strength advantage here? Well, I think anybody with eyeballs can see that, but if you do not, ladies and gentlemen, is the intern that's got, oh, uh, goodness, 85 or so pounds on Jimmy. Oh, look at this, a headbutt, and now you, he's biting him. Can you bite him through a mask? Well, uh, look at this, Sean you know, Vincent with a handful of hair. I don't see that. That is no good. Actually, he was using the uh, tag rope. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Sure it does. Oh, in turn, sending Razor right into the turnbuckle. Yes. There you go. Just raking those eyes right on the top rope, leading him into the boot of See? Sean Vincent. He's learning. He is he's learning. obeying. He's doing exactly what he's told. It's That's the out point perfectly. of an internship. Absolutely. Oh, big back body drop, Sean Vincent. You know, I thought Razor Ramon passed away a few months ago. Yeah. How's he wrestling here? That's not him. Sean Vincent with a cheap shot to Mulitano. How do you know it was a cheap shot? Maybe because I maybe, saw it. Maybe Moo Moo guy uh, over here made some comment about Canada and he was just yeah. defending himself. Vincent picking up Razor. What's he got in mind here? Oh, so he's little, tying him up to the tree and of woe. A tree of woe action. Oh, just choking him in the corner. Razor's got to get you out go. of there. And he's back to New Zealand. Oh. Big boot to the gut of the upside down Jimmy Razor. The upside down Jimmy Razor. Was he not? He was. Thank you. There you go. That's what you got to do. You got to get this intern Meanwhile, aggressive. His, his partner's no help. He's on the floor. He's ignoring his own now partner. Now he's recovering from a cheap shot. Well, he shouldn't have said it's anything about Canada. Astonishing one. You didn't hear that. Never I happened. did too. Nope. So did you. Referee admonishing the intern, but Sean Vincent yeah, using this opportunity. Beautiful. See? Just choking Jimmy Razor behind the referee's back. See, the intern is paying dividends. The intern's learning. Oh, he's got him lined up. Oh, just beautiful. Asking for the tag. Makes the tag. Oh, they got a prone Jimmy Razor right where they want him. They're, they're working very well together, aren't they? I think this is what Sean Vincent has Logan. been wanting Sean Vincent from his intern the him. whole time. Razor ducks the clothesline, big body splash. Oh, can he do it? No, no. Sean Vincent right shoulder out at two. Of course two. he can't. He's not half the man that Sean Vincent is. Plus, Sean Vincent's Canadian. Did you know that? Austin Mulitano trying to get the crowd to send some energy to Jimmy Razor. Did you know that Sean Vincent was Canadian? Yes. Oh. He should talk about that more, don't you think? No. Big tag, Mulitano. Coming in, let's see what they got in mind for Vincent. Oh, Big double on clothesline. Two on one. And they're just taking it to the intern. That's Another what you two gotta on do. One. Oh no, Sean Vincent behind Razor and Mulitano. He was loading up that boot. Well, that's their own the fault. The boot. Oh, right to the gut of Austin. Turn around, Oh, ref. he's got him pinned. Intern takes care of Razor, they got the three. Ladies and gentlemen, a cohesive tag team yes. effort on behalf of Sean Vincent yes. and the intern. Exactly what Sean Vincent has been wanting out of his intern. Ladies and gentlemen, they got it done on this occasion. What are they doing here? Well, it looks to me like they're teaching him a lesson. Oh, they're just throwing Mulitano right out of the ring. Folks. He's throwing him to his partner. They got it done. It is the intern and Sean Vincent picking up the win today on All-Star. Look at him putting that boot back. Well, All you know right. what? That was their own fault. Well, they they got... double teamed the man and yep. distracted the ref. Vincent and the intern with the win today. I think the intern did very well today. Hope he gets an A. Come on, join me. Oh, Canada. Come on, sing. My home and native land. Ladies and gentlemen, our cameras recently caught up with the one and only, the Hall of Famer, Cowboy Bob Orton. He has some words for yourself, for Mahler McDarby, and for Kowalski ahead of his tag team match, teaming with Brandon Beretta against the Dogtown Underground, hey. August the 12th. Nobody, nobody told me about that. Nobody cleared that with me. Well, why should they? Pardon me, August the 13th, we will be in the East Grand Lake Community Center. Let's go to Cowboy Bob right now. Wait, wait a minute. Dogtown Underground. This is Brandon Beretta. 
W Hall of Famer, Cowboy, Bob Orton Jr. Saturday night, August 13th, East Carondelet is coming right around the corner. And I hope you guys are ready. Because I'm telling you right now, we are. Kowalski, Lucky P, and Muller McDarby, you guys have done everything in your power to try to keep me down. You guys are strong, you guys are big, but you've also had to use a shillelagh. You've had to use Lucky P's briefcase and different antics to cheat me out of a win, attack me from behind. August 13th, I told you there's gonna be an equalizer. And there is. And I'm gonna bring it. And that is my trainer from the Ace Wrestling Academy. Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. I've done a good job training you, buddy. It took two of them, and I'll tell you what, baby. <laughs> oh, man, I even broke my watch. I'll tell you what, I'm going to break some heads when we get in here, because I'm telling you right now that this man right here is a future star, and you're not going to hold him down. If it takes three of you, that's fine, but there's going to be two of us this time, and I got a pretty good right left and I can smack the hell out of somebody with this cast and enjoy doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, this match set for one fall. Introducing first, from the Far East, at 222 pounds, he is the Shogun. His opponent from Indianapolis, Indiana, 230 pounds, Flash Flanagan! Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, it's it's your friend, Steve Oh, Lane. look, Flash, look out. Oh, look at this. Stephen E. telling the intern he's got a big payday coming if he can uh, uh, that's, make- That's the Shogun, not the intern. What did I say? Pardon me. Thank you. I'm here to help. Oh. Well, you know. Well, he's taking uh, Stephen E's offer. Maybe let's why see not? if the Shogun can get any success against Flash Flanagan. I'd say he's Could looking pretty good right now. Could you imagine how much that would upend SICW if somehow this man could defeat Flash Flanagan? I would love it. I'm not. I'm not counting on it though. But then again, you know, he is a foreigner. Look at this. Flash Flanagan he says he's from Japan. ramming the Shogun's face into each and every turnbuckle and now stomping as a mud hole, as they say. Yeah, this is not going the way Stephen E. wants. Well, Flash turned this one around pretty quickly. Yes, he did. Flash, big clothesline on the Shogun. Well, he's pointing Stephen out e. something. Stephen E. looking to distract the referee. I don't know how wise this is. Well, Flash actually, this is goes to his trusty all. kendo stick. This is not very smart. Oh, uh -oh. the Shogun just cracked right in the skull. Referee missed it, counts the three. Flash Flanagan, he's playing no games with these people. He's got Stephen E and Attila Khan and Jake Prater, pardon, Sheik Prater, the traitor, in his sights. Stephen E, I think, yeah. is starting to understand what he's gotten himself that, into that did with not Flash quite work. Flanagan. Ladies and gentlemen, Flash picking up a quick, impressive victory today on All-Star Wrestling. That did not quite work out the way that uh, your friend Stephen E planned it, did it? It certainly did not, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to go to a quick break. When we return, we go back to Wrestling at the Chase for our classic match of the week featuring Hacksaw Butch Reed. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I hope we get to see Rufus R. Jones finally. Wrestling fans, the Cauliflower Alley Club, better known as the CAC, has been around for 56 years. The CAC was formed to assist those men and women who have been in the wrestling business. Their main purpose is to help those men and women who have fallen on hard times. This year, the CAC celebrates their 56th year reunion in Las Vegas on September 26th through 28th. If you're a true wrestling fan, please consider becoming a member of the CAC by visiting their website. The CAC recently named SICW promoter Herb Simmons to the CAC Advisory Board as the club ambassador and communicator. Also named to the CAC Executive Board was longtime wrestling fan from the St. Louis region, Miss Darla Staggs. With your membership, the CAC will continue its mission of being there when one of our wrestlers needs them. 
wrestling superstar Bobby D now has his own line of apparel and his own online wrestling merchandise store. Visit www.bobbydwrestling.com for all of the great wrestling memorabilia from Belleville's own Bobby D. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time to hop back in the Wayback Machine, as I like to say. We're going back to wrestling at the chase as Hacksaw, Butch Reed, one of the greatest wrestlers to ever come out of the state of Missouri, will team up with the ever-popular Rufus R. Jones. Oh, there you go. They are taking on the Kelly Twins. This is going to be a great contest, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at that now. The final bout, an Australian tag team match, most falls to curfew. Introducing from St. Joe, Missouri, weighing 252 pounds, Bruce Reed. From Boston, Mass, weighing 270 pounds, Rufus R. Jones. From Toronto, Canada, weighing 251 pounds, Mike Kelly. And so also from Toronto, Canada, weighing 252 pounds, Pat Kelly. The identical, identical, I can't even say it, the identical twins, the Kelly brothers, Pat and Mike, against Rufus R. Jones and Bruce Reed, two top tag team combinations right here because Reed and Jones have been together quite a bit of late in the Midwest and have been recording many victories. Nice takedown by one of the Kellys on Reed. Reed counters with a hammerlock. It's Mike Kelly who's in there with Bruce Reed. Actually, Rufus R. Jones has more or less taken Bruce Reed under Rufus's wing, giving him some tips, some pointers, some advice, a little help to the young man trying to battle his way to the top and doing quite well at it. Kelly flying around that ring. Reed flying around that ring. Everybody moving. Look out. Arm drag by Reed. Well done by Bruce Reed as he outmaneuvers Mike Kelly and comes up with an arm drag. Well, you have to give the Kelly twins credit. They're certainly not backing down from the tough competition today. Bruce Reed and Rufus R. Jones, an upcoming bout against the Von Eric brothers, Carrie and David. And I'm sure they were paying attention to how Carrie won that last match with that stomach claw into the air and then a backdrop. You can bet they'll be guarding their midsections from Carrie Von Eric in that match. Mike Kelly nimbly to his feet, tosses Reed down. Reed hangs on, but a tag is made to Pat Kelly. Mike Kelly hangs on to Reed's head. And Kelly bangs in the end of the back of Bruce Reed. Front face lock by Pat Kelly on Bruce Reed. He uses the chance to take Reed down. Count of one, but then Reed throws off Pat Kelly. Kelly quickly back on top of Reed. Reed lifts Kelly and slams him. There's another guy with tremendous power, Bruce Reed. We put all the muscles together that Kerry Von Erich and Bruce Reed have. Well, we'll have enough left over for you and me, Mickey. Here comes Rufus. And Kelly doesn't know it. He knows it now. That's right. Rufus twists that arm around. <laughs> Kelly kicking out. Nicely done by Pat Kelly. Pat tags his identical twin, Mike. When we say identical, boy, we mean it. You see those two guys standing next to one another. You don't know who to high Pat or high Mike, or you don't know who's which. The amazing thing about the two is that their styles are so similar and it makes it difficult in tag matches because they do so many things the same way so well. They complement each other so well. Now they're tough in single matches, no question about that, in individual combat. When you put them together, I'll tell you the sum is greater than the parts in many cases. And that's not meant derogatorily in any way because they are tough on their own, one against one. But together, they're dynamite. They're hard to handle the Kelly Twins. They have so much experience as tag team. And that certainly does not bode well for the Von Erics, David and Carrie. Sure, they've had a lot of experience together too, but probably not as much as the Kelly twins have had. Rufus R. Jones puts Kelly in that corner with a forearm smash. Oh, Rufus has the beard! He twists Mike Kelly around and tries to pull out the beard. He'd be doing us a favor if he did, because then I can tell one Kelly from the other. Yeah, I agree with you. Rufus, jiving and moving. Pat Kelly moves behind Rufus, pulls Rufus R. Jones down. Rufus, another man who has to be thought about when you talk about contenders for who might be the world champion after Flair and Race clash. Could this be it for Harley Race? Is this finally the moment 
Everybody agrees that Ric Flair has what it takes to be the world champion. Forget about the robes. Forget about the bragging. Forget about the strutting. Forget about the fancy cars, the fancy clothes. Look at what Ric Flair can do inside that ring. The solid fundamentals taught him by Vern Gagne. Many of the strategies of the feelings for what goes on that ring picked up from Buddy Rogers. Plus his own style, the many things that he can do so well, the suplexes, the elbow drops, the figure four leg lock, the figure four leg lock, which defeated David Von Erich and Earn Flair this opportunity. The figure four leg lock that's been so important, but still the good fundamentals are there. Look at all the times Flair has won a big match, a critical match with a quick cradle. And he has victories over many of the good ones, the great ones, as you watch Rufus Jones be double teamed by the Kelly Twins. Look at Flair's record. Two wins over Ted DiBiase, a victory over David Von Erich. Three former world champions beaten by Ric Flair. Rufus R. Jones lifts Kelly off the top. Race knows this is as tough a test as he could ever have. It's Race versus Flair for all the marbles, the gold belt. Five minutes have passed. Five minutes remain in the curfew. We check with Mickey. Yeah, that's right. Five minutes remaining in the curfew. No falls yet. Whichever team has the most falls when time expires, they will be the winners. Side headlock by Bruce Reed on Mike Kelly. Reed squeezing the head of Kelly. Reed twisting that neck. And of course, you know that Bruce Reed has developed a very potent sleeper hole. That's something the Kellys can worry about. Nice takedown by Kelly. Good moving around that mat by Bruce Reed. Pat Kelly wants to make a tag. Reed stops it by hooking the arm. The Kellys still trying to tap fingers and get that tag made. But not really any way can be done. No, nope. feet don't count. Chuck Riley stops him. Sorry, folks. The crowd hoots and hollers at the Kellys. That was a good idea, nothing lost by trying, I guess. The referees aren't about to let that happen. And while they were arguing, Kelly and Riley, that is, Bruce Reed dragged Mike Kelly away from his brother and over to the corner where Rufus R. Jones is. So if there's any tags now, it'll be Reed and Jones, but Mike Kelly trying to scoot his way across that mat and get over to his brother. Mike Kelly very close. Very close to making that tag. Pat reaching in, he makes the tag. It was made. And then Mike Kelly hangs on to Reed so that Pat Kelly can bang away on the back of Bruce Reed. A knee to the ribs of Reed by Kelly. Kelly covers. Only a count of one and then two before Reed throws off Pat Kelly. Forearm smash to the jaw by Pat Kelly. Reed trapped in the corner. Pat Kelly the front face lock. Tag made to Mike Kelly. Pat hangs on to Reed. Again, the Kellys double teaming Reed. Reed trying to fight back a forearm smash to the back by Kelly and then he grabs the head of Bruce Reed. Look at him stretching out that neck. Really trying to punish Reed. Another quick tag, keeping a fresh man in there. The Kellys working smoothly now, working like a tag team machine really. A knee lift by Mike Kelly. Pat Kelly covers. Rufus R. Jones getting angry. Count of two. Oh, and I mean by about a half of a second, Bruce Reed manages to avoid being pinned. We nearly had the first fall right there and it nearly went to the Kelly twins. Pat Kelly with that front face lock. They're wearing down Bruce Reed. That quick tagging is starting to take its toll on Reed. This time, Reed further away. Here comes another tag. The Kelly's working smoothly right now. Two minutes left, two minutes. There are two minutes remaining in the curfew. Still no fall, but Reed's sinking ever so slowly into trouble. He could stand a tag with Rufus R. Jones. That double arm lock could easily be turned into a suplex. That's what Reed's struggling against. Oh, he yanks Reed down. A lot of power right there by Kelly. Reed scores the punch to the stomach and he has to root the Sar Jones. Here comes Rufus and he's on the warpath. He whips Kelly to the ropes, catches him coming off and flips him over the top. Rufus gets that freight train rolling, flying tackle. Here comes Rufus again, a flying tackle. Tag made to Bruce.
Bruce Reed and Reed can get some evens right here. Drives that fist into the bridge of the nose of Mike Kelly. Kelly tossed to the rope by Bruce Reed. Elbow smashed to the chin. One minute left, one minute. Reed grabs Mike Kelly, pitches him to the ropes. Oh, the drop kick misses. The drop kick by Reed missed as Mike Kelly sidestepped. Here comes Pat Kelly tagged into the ring. Oh, it just looked like Reed and Jones had it going. Look out, small package. The small package by Reed. Pat Kelly that'll break it up. And Rufus R. Jones is after Kelly. All four men in the ring as Jones came to his partner's rescue. Pat Kelly yells at his brother. Both Kellys grabbing Reed. The referee's chasing Rufus back. The Kellys waiting. They try to clothesline Reed. Reed comes up with a drop kick and fours. Both Kelly twins. Here comes Rufus. All four men in the ring. Jones and Reed. Both Kelly twins. The Kellys battling with Reed and Jones. Reed flattens one Kelly with a drop kick. Pat Kelly and Rufus are Jones and Adani Brook. Pat butt by Rufus. Pat Kelly fighting back. One Kelly whipped into the other. Rufus grabs Pat Kelly. Leg drop by Reed. Uh, Donnie Brook inside. Kelly and Jones ready to lose again. This match, the time limit has expired. The match is over and it's going to be a draw. The Kelly twins against Reed and Jones. Some hot and heavy action right there. Let's make it official and hear from Mickey. With time running out, the referee declares the match a draw. Wrestling fans, I am joined by Toxic Masculinity, the team of Axe Allwart and Mr. Roger Mathis. Gentlemen, last time we saw you, unfortunately you were on the losing side. Oh, hey, hang on. Whoa, no, Roger, hey. Hey. I'm sorry. Am I okay? Just, just watch your mouth now. What did you say? I couldn't quite hear it. He grabbed you real hard. What'd you say? What happened last week? What'd you say? Unfortunately. Oh, should I even say it? You did lose your match in the tag team tournament against Gary Jackson and Billy McNeil. Where do you go from here? Well, I want to know what your definition of losing. Shut your mouth. These people saw and you saw. Now, how do you win a wrestling match, generally? Pinfall, submission. Oh, what does a pinfall consist of? So one, two, three count. Right. They saw it, and I know you saw it. You were at the podium. One, two, my shoulder clearly up, clearly up off the mat. The referee counts three anyway. Now what me and Roger, what me and Roger want to know is this. Is there some conspiracy against real men in this league? There has to be because that referee was paid off to make sure we lost. There is no, look at us. Look, Roger, show him that muscle. Show, it is inconceivable that anybody could beat Axe Allward and Roger Mathis. It cannot happen. Nobody can beat us, ever. So we know that somebody is paying off somebody around here. That's it. So are you in, are you involved in this, Drew? Nobody's paying me. Nobody's paying you? Well, that's a good thing because you ain't worth a nickel. But, but I want to know that all I can tell you is this. Those boys in the back better watch out because we're coming for them. And when we find out who's been paying them off, they're in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, warning to the locker room from toxic masculinity. That's a scary dude, Roger Mathis, right there. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. When we return, it is time for our TV main event. It is the tag team uh, title tournament match. We will see Bobby D and the Big Texan Take on the Dogtown Underground. It's your TV main event, and it is next. Wrestling fans, are you looking for those vintage toys, those hard-to-find 70s, 80s, and 90s action figures? G.I. Joe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, Transformers. Look no further than Snyder Toys. They will have what you're looking for. Give Robert Snyder a call at 618-314-3266 for all your vintage toy needs. Wrestling fans, SICW Wrestling has been providing fundraising opportunities for several decades for local communities and nonprofit organizations. If your community or organization is in need of a great fundraising opportunity, SICW Professional Wrestling is the way to go. For more information or to schedule an event, 
Call 618-286-4848 or 618-719-1034. We'll bring the matches to you. Ladies and gentlemen, your TV main event is set for one fall. It is a match in the Tag Team Championship Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, from Dogtown, weighing 229 pounds, representing the Dogtown Underground, one half of the professionals, Mauler McDarby. His tag team partner, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 467 pounds, also representing the Dogtown Underground, Kowalski. They are accompanied to the ring by Lucky P. Larson Esquire. And their opponents, first, from Gun Barrel, Texas, weighing 386 pounds, the Big Texan. His tag team partner is from Belleville, Illinois, weighing in at 268 pounds. He is your Bruiser Brody Memorial Battle Royal Champion. He is also your SICW Central States Champion, Bobby D. The bell has rung, referee Bill Henson getting the action started. It is Bobby D and Mauler McDarby getting the match kicked off. Nice waist lock takedown from Bobby to the Mauler into a nice chin lock. This is gonna be a tremendous match. The Dogtown Underground have been on a tear, injuring people left and right. But if anybody can stand up to these two, well, these three, rather, it's Bobby D and the Big Texan. They talk about Kowalski and how he usually has the size advantage. Well, he certainly has the weight advantage, but I don't know that he has the overall size advantage when compared to the Big Texan. And the two men who are currently in the ring, Mauler McDarby and Bobby D, are rather equally matched. Bobby D's got about 40 pounds, maybe 35 on Mauler McDarby, but they're both very technical wrestlers. Mauler knows how to get a little dirty if he needs to, but so does Bobby D. We just don't really see that from him. He relies on his wrestling ability rather than any sort of underhanded tactics. Now this should be pretty good. Of course, we've seen already it is Billy McNeil and the night train, Gary Jackson, who have advanced into the finals of the tag team tournament. By the end of this match, we should find out who they'll be facing. Lucky P. Larson, he's one victory away uh, to entering the finals, and that's what he's predicting ever since we announced this tournament. But Bobby D and Jim Texan, or pardon, Big Texan, these are two guys who have been on a roll of their own. Big Texan picking up wins left and right with his brute strength on display here with these shoulder blocks. But it's Big Texan and his lariat that's been laying waste to competition left and right. And Bobby D has been relying on his wrestling skills. Over the last several months, we've seen Bobby D use numerous tactics to win matches. Lots of different maneuvers and moves. Keeps his opponents on their toes because they never know what he's going to utilize to get a pinfall. Look at these two guys. Yeah, Lucky P. Larson's complaining. It's two on one. That's just a taste of your own medicine there, boss. Bobby D and the Big Texan, they, uh, they're as cohesive as anyone. Listen to that, how about that big boot from Texan right to the chest of Mauler McDarby. Oh. Texan just relying on that strength. Mauler is gonna have to pull out something from his bag of tricks. He's not gonna win a battle of strength. He's not gonna out, outpower himself from, uh, from that, yeah. Texan making the tag to Bobby. 
They got Mahler up, big slam. Mahler right in the center of the ring. Boom, big elbow drop from Bobby D, your Central States champion. Bobby, D Bobby with the tag to the Texan. Big ham hock right to the bread basket of McDarby. Oh, I don't know how Mauler's still standing. One of those blows from the big Texan. I'd have to go on vacation for about a month. Big elbow sent McDar uh, McDarby to the mat. Yeah, that's a, that's a good move, making the tag to the big man. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Two of the biggest men anywhere in the squared circle, certainly here in SICW. Collar and elbow tie up. Let's see, does either man have the strength advantage here? Look at them, neither man. Oh, gaining an inch, I spoke too soon. Texan backing Kowalski up. No, Kowalski now getting a little bit of momentum. Nope, oh, it is fine, it is Texan just bullying Kowalski into the corner. Oh! They heard that all across Illinois, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd chanting for one more time. Kowalski probably doesn't he want to hear that. Look at Jim, he's tying up those arms. Oh! Kowalski's gonna have a couple of pretty big handprints on his chest tomorrow. Oh, but with the wherewithal to get out of the way from the incoming Texan. He's working on that arm. He's got that left arm bent uh, over the top rope. Oh, and Mahler just draping the left arm and shoulder across the top rope. Uh oh, now Jim's got a bit of a weakness. And I think they got their eyes all over. Look at Kowalski just clubbering all over that shoulder. What's he got in mind here? He's just got that arm barred up. Oh, driving all of that weight right into the elbow, the bicep. That could tear a muscle, that could dislocate an elbow. And we've seen Texan, uh, a few months ago, had injured uh, one of his shoulders running the lariat into the post. Kowalski, that's got to be tricky, even getting the big Texan up off of his feet. Yep, he's got a great grip, got a wrist lock. Double wrist lock on uh, Big Texan from Kowalski. Standing double wrist lock, very nice maneuver. Texan overpowering Kowalski, just brutal blows raining down, but Kowalski to the eyes of Texan, to the throat. Well, and now raking the eyes, not necessarily legal maneuvers, but they are certainly effective. And hey, I don't want to encourage any cheating or any underhanded tactics, but when the tag team titles are on the line, well, there you go. Look at this. This is how somebody like Mauler McDarby, who's giving up 150 pounds here, can stay one step ahead of a giant of a man like the big Texan. You have to be strategic and te technical. And that's what he's doing. Yeah, manipulating that referee, Kowalski, distracting Bill Henson long enough. The ref missed the tag, Texan tagging Bobby, but the ref didn't see it. Nope, he's gonna nullify the tag. Bobby's back in the corner. Mueller and Kowalski taking all sorts of advantage over the situation. Oh, big splash to the arm. That'll dislocate. Like I've said, elbows, shoulders. What's he got in mind here? Kowalski picking up Texan. Backing him up to the ropes. Irish whip. Oh, Texan was going for a lariat. He missed it. Kowalski. Oh, no. Two huge clotheslines sending both big men to the mat. 
Who can make it to their feet first? <laughs> Look at Lucky trying to fan off Kowalski. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. Big Texan. Oh, Kowalski is moving a little quicker towards his corner. Both of these men have to make the tag. Kowalski with the tag to McDarby. Texan to the tag to Bobby D. Bobby D using his uh, energy reserves. Staying all over both of these men, using Mahler McDarby's head as a battering ram into the midsection of Kowalski. Big double suplex on the 460 pounder. I can't believe it. Tremors and aftershocks rattling Isker on the let. Oh, we've, we've seen them use this double team move, but they were cut off right there. Kowalski cutting off Texan. McDarby with the briefcase to Bobby D. Kowalski holding off Texan for the three. They did it, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, I hate that he was right, but he was indeed. It's Lucky's team. It's the Dogtown Underground. Mahler, McDarby, Kowalski. They picked up the win here today. Not only did they pick up the win, they have advanced to the finals of the Tag Team Championship Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, all right. Hang on, let me go talk to these guys. Your next SNW Tag Team Champions, the Dogtown Underground, Mahler McDarby, Kowalski, Lucky P. Larson, Esquire, the boss. Now, Gary Jackson, Billy McNeil, you guys are dead men. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he is correct. You guys have advanced to the finals of the Tag Team Championship I'm Tournament. However, before that, folks, East Carondelet, August the 13th, you will see Bob Orton here to see you guys teaming with Brandon Beretta against you guys. If I may, one thing I want Bob Orton and Brandon Beretta to both know, on that night, the kingpin of pro wrestling himself and Kowalski and me, Bob, things are gonna get a little rowdy. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. That's what's coming. We're going to pay you back for what you did. And Brandon Beretta, if you are dumb enough to make the same mistake and come here again, you may never walk again. Ladies and gentlemen, East Carondelet Community Center, August the 13th, Dogtown Underground versus Brandon Beretta and Cowboy Bob Orton. You will also see Curtis Wilde go one-on-one -on -one with Attila Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, the action will be hot. August the 13th, East Carondelet Community Center. Don't miss it. That's all for tonight. We got to get out of here. Thanks for joining us today for SICW All-Star Wrestling. For Lucky P. Larson, I'm Drew Abenhouse. Fans, we'll see you next week right here on All-Star Wrestling. Have a great night, everybody.